that means sometimes we have to go into the ER, yeah. which is the medical community hates that, you know. Um, but that's now what I'm really about is the kind of the prevention and trying to prevent things from getting to that point. Um, I think that I'm definitely in the right place. I think this model that we have, um, being in the barbershop, again, this wasn't my intentions to be the first, but ironically, again, this is the nation's first men's health and education center. I, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just so obvious. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that's the simplicity of it is what makes it, you know, so cool. Yeah. Um, and I hate to put you on the spot, but, you know, maybe if we could tell a couple stories, you know, so when we've had conversations in the past, uh, like, for example, um, if, you know, one of your um, friends is legitimately, legitimately interested in uh, learning more about their health or they have an issue and they would go to a health care provider and they would be ostracized right. or whatever, okay. would you share that? Because, yeah. I, you know, again, this is, there's so many different factors Absolutely. affecting this, yeah. but I think it's important to discuss this. Right. You know, one of the things that we, we offer um, from my Men's Health and Education Center, it's a survey. Yeah. And the survey, just a series of questions, but uh, I'm so glad that Dr. Zapata helped me design this survey. Um, and what, what the surveys have revealed is there is still a significant mistrust of the medical community. As I start to ask men, give me some examples of why you don't trust. And little things like, well, I call to schedule my appointment and we couldn't get a time to work. And I would ask, well, do you have weekend appointments? Only to have the receptionist say, you know, we're here from 7 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. You got to figure this out. You have to be on our schedule. We don't need to be on yours. Mm -hmm. And to have someone say that, that this is what happened to them. I can give you a great example, just speaking personally. Um, I had an appointment. I asked my doctor um, for a, a flu shot. The nurse comes in. He said, I have the nurse come in and she'll give me a flu shot. So knowing that the nurse is coming in, I'm actually starting to roll up my sleeve. The nurse comes in, pops the top off the, the flu shot, sticks it right through my shirt. And I was shocked. And I looked at her, you know, because even though I'm not in the medical field, I knew that that was unethical. And I was just so shocked. And I said this to her, and she literally looked at me, Jude, and said, I didn't do that. I have blood on my shirt where she stuck the needle in. And, you know, I stopped sharing that with men because as I share that story, it's almost like, okay, now I'm feeding into the whole narrative of not trusting right, you kind of, medical. Yeah, and so I don't even share that anymore because my goal is to help build that, be, help build that bridge back to the medical community. It's just like having police in the community. I mean, we gotta have, we gotta have a relationship yeah. with police now. I know that I'm biased because I'm a former cop, right. <laughs> but, but but we have to figure out how to get along because you know we, we, we just have to figure this out. It's the same as medical. Um, we we got to figure out this relationship because uh, we need one another, you know. Um, but I think hearing what a lot of the men talk about, they feel that the medical we need the medical community, but the medical community doesn't really care if we come to the table or not. And I hear that a lot. And so we, we have to fix that because we've had men that have come in that have been in serious pain, but their thought is take a few ibuprofen and tough it out. I had a man that came into the men's center, um, mouth was swollen. Um, he came in and asked if, if I had some reading material on, on dental, and I'm looking at the swelling in his jaw and I'm thinking, Oh, brother, you need more than just some reading material. Right. And so I started to make some calls. Um, we were able <clears throat> to get him in. Um, this young man, from my understanding, and I you know, can't say this is kind of word of mouth, but I understand that 
the bacteria had gotten so bad in his mouth that it got into his bloodstream and that was the pain that he was feeling in his arm. Wow. Um, it's my understanding that when he finally sought medical attention, he may have stayed in the hospital two days. But I just remember him coming into the barbershop and giving me the thumbs up, you know. And having that happen told me we're in the right place. Yep. And we're starting to reach. But again, I can tell you story upon story like that, that consistently show us that we are in the right place. And now we're really trying to get a steady flow of medical personnel to come in. Um, we're gonna start this thing called the Lunchtime Luncheon, mm -hmm. where um, every other Wednesday we'll have professionals come in, um, you know, and break bread with us. We'll invite, you know, five to six men to come in and do a Lunchtime Learning Series. Mm -hmm. You know, this will be perfect for the men that have been coming in and talking about, you know, the issues of erectile dysfunction. Yeah. You know, bring a medical doctor, have them come in and, and kind of, you know, give some updates on that and give some education on it. And, and then we break bread together. Mm -hmm. The neat thing about that, Jude, is what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break that mistrust. Yeah. Um, we, we have to get along. And I, I still today, this is not to knock any medical facility, that's not my intent, but I just, I just it's kind of like, well, um, you need us, we, we don't need you. And, and that's sad. I, 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 you know, I'm an educated man to be able to stand here and say that's what I feel. I can only imagine what some of the other men are feeling. You know? so, well, I know you've you've reached out to the medical community, and yes. I mean administrators in the yes. medical yes. community. Yes, yes. And you've you know showed them that you're making inroads, you're providing something that's valuable, mm -hmm. um, but you're still feeling pushback, which yeah. is uh, frustrating. So, based on that type of information that you're getting, where do you, what's your vision for at least in the short term of what what you think would be the most helpful for you to continue to get the message right. out there and to grow it and to help men uh, to really become interested in their health and to take a proactive stance with yeah. their health? Yeah, you know, probably the the first thing that I'm going to do right away is um, you know, and I spoken to my friends down in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. but we're going to create a men's health referral network. Um, we're going to focus on the barber shops. We're going to focus on the beauty salons because the health disparities for African-American men are, are, are bad, but they're not that great for women either. Yeah. And so we're going to create this um, uh, health referral network that we can start coming together and talking about the issues. We can build off of these successes that we're having and we can get rid of the stuff that just doesn't work. Um, I just don't understand why we keep stuff that doesn't work, why we keep it around, why we keep going back to it. It just, if it doesn't work, just get rid Don't of get it. me started. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're feeling that pain too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, my thing is, you know, creating this um, this referral network and start it, you know, so what, what my ultimate goal, Jude, I wanna do is that we gotta change this culture. Yeah. Um, from a culture from where it's at to a culture of wellness. Now I can say when I first opened my men's health center up, I can see already that the dialogue in the barbershop is changing. Um, it used to be focused a lot on sports and maybe some politics, but now I'm starting to hear men talk about health. They're talking about doing the push-ups. They're talking about getting the exercise in. And so we're slowly changing that culture and that's the part that I'm most excited about. Yeah. Um, I really believe that the model that we created, um, I think this can be a model for the nation because you can pick my men's health and education center up and pick the barbershop and sit it in any community. Yes. And I think you will start to have those results. And uh, I, I feel very strongly about it. I'm praying like crazy that um, this can really come together. But ultimately what we want to do is we want to become a satellite clinic for one of the medical facilities. Um, we're, we believe that of the number of men that we see um, each and every week, um, I believe we hit a home run with this. Yeah. 
and um, these men, they don't have insurance. For the ones that don't have insurance, I have stacks of Badger Care okay. applications. Right. So we get them registered and get it them. It just seems so obvious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then for the men that that do have um, insurance, now I'm getting so proficient on the types of insurances that I tell them, God, you have the best insurance in Dane County. Yeah. Why are you not using this? Right. And, you know, so we're starting to help men talk about that. We had guys that have come in and have openly admitted that they haven't slept in the same room with their wives or girlfriends for for a long time. And so I talk with them about a sleep study because they're stars. And most of these guys have never heard of a sleep study. One guy literally made the call before he left the office and got him a sleep study schedule and well, it needed to be a referral. And then they finally um, told him exactly when he can anticipate getting this um, sleep study going. The last time he had came in, he was very happy because they said that he doesn't have sleep apnea, but they were highly encouraging him to lose weight because they said his neck was really thick, you know, and I'm not a medical person. Sure. Um, but they were encouraging him, but he was at least happy to know that for one, he didn't have sleep apnea because I gave him help um, education material on it, yeah. and he read through it, and, and it can be kind of frightening to yep. read it. Yep. We had another guy that actually um, did the did the sleep study, and he does have sleep apnea, and so he was asking me about the CPAP machine, and, and I told him, I said, you know, I've had a sleep a CPAP machine that I've used one year. Next year, I don't have to use it, you yeah. know, and the fact is because sometimes I get lazy and get a little carried away with my, my fitness and nutrition, then I have to use it again. Yeah. Um, but what I told them that there's no shame in, in, in using a CPAP machine. Um, we had another guy that his girlfriend told him that you should talk to your doctor because I counted last night and I think you stopped breathing for 18 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me about that. And I said, well, <laughs> did you take her serious? Because the fact that he came to talk to me about it was like seeking a second opinion. And yeah. I was like, you know, I don't think you need a second opinion on that. We, you should be Pretty good information. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, but the fact that these are conversations that we're having. Right. And, you know, what I can say is that, yes, men do want to talk about their health. It just has to be the right setting, and I think that's what we provide. Yeah. And having visited uh, the clinic too, what is really cool to see is that um, these adult men who bring their children in yes. are modeling behavior yes. that, you know, is being a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always what's seen rather than what's you know spoken right. that seems mm -hmm. to stick. Yeah. Um, and you've provided a venue for them mm -hmm. to see that. Right. And, yeah. But it's not. Uh, intimidating mm -hmm. it, you know it's it's open and like you said it's friendly and it's right. welcome and people are having conversations that right. they've not even yeah yeah had yeah and, and Jill the biggest difference is this is this is a space of their own and there's times when guys in the barbershop get really loud one of the barbers will come over and close my door <laughs> right. and I tell them no keep the door open this is their space That's this right. is the barbershop right and you know, and they smile, you know. But the number one thing that I want to do now is I'm really working to find um, a grant in the community because I want to get all the barbers um, trained to be health ambassadors. They have such a great relationship with all of their clientele. Um, they can tell you any and everything about each and every one. And so we want to capitalize off that you know, to make, to help the, the barbers become health ambassadors so that they can pick up on certain things that they observe, you know. Um, sometimes you may have a clientele that doing a simple, you know, 10 minute haircut, they fall asleep. You, you can address that, you can talk about that. You know, people talk about, hey, you know, I'm getting this strange coloring on my fingernails, you know. Be able so what we're now hearing is the barbers some don't want to touch that they said oh go talk to Aaron <laughs> right <laughs> you know but but it's 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 still it's still great that to know that 
we are having such an impact. Yeah. And the sad thing about this is that our elected officials have no idea of what we're doing out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this this could be this could be the game changer. You know, and, and I'm hoping that at some point someone will really do a serious evaluation on what we're doing because I think this is the model. Yeah. Um, it's very grassroots. It's very um, uh, very grounded in uh, lifestyle yeah. what, what that's already in place. Right. It's not like you have to create anything. <laughs> that's great. It's just the way people are doing their lives, you know, and I, I, I again I just can't say it enough. You know, it's the brilliance is in the simplicity. Of it. <laughs> yeah, right. It really is. Mm -hmm. And you know, it just took, you know, just you know, clicking that one domino and now you're starting to have, right. you know, an effect that, that's becoming, you know, broader right. and not just within uh, this city or this county, but you know, you're talking about Milwaukee and right. nationwide yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you know, I I just I'm very excited uh, about this for you and and, you. and, and uh, the possibilities that, that go along with it. So um, I can't wait to, to see it flourish and yeah. grow and whatever I can do to support you and yeah. help you with that. You know, I'm all in. Man, I appreciate it. it. And like I say, Jude, I'm not trying to like, you know, toot your horn or anything. You have been such an influence. And, you know, it's kind of like how you touch people. And, you know, you may touch somebody that may go and touch somebody else, and that person will touch them. You know, I, I don't think, and I know that this is just your mannerism and just laid back, but when I say a lot of this began with you giving me confidence, um, you know, I can't, I can't underestimate that. Um, I mean, I, I literally believe had there not been an Iron Man, you know, I'm not sure I would be doing this. I probably would be on a different path doing something right. else. But I'm, I'm, I'm all, almost confident that I wouldn't be doing this, yeah. you know. And so um, this is when you kind of look at, you know, the, the whole picture. And, and yeah, man, you're part of that. You, you helped to make this happen. And again, just giving us the confidence. Um, I don't know what your other uh, clientele um, you know, I know Ramona. She, she's pretty happy with it. Right, <laughs> you know, right. uh, probably shouldn't be talking about that. Yeah. That's supposed to be confidential. <laughs> right. But, uh, but you know, um, more than anything, uh, I'm looking forward to um, taking on that Ironman again next year. I'm really um, focus on building that base that you often talked about, um, so that when I, I approach you and I'm ready to to do the training, I, I'm going to take it serious. I want to do one more Iron Man, and then that's it. Yeah. You know, I just, I just. And someone told me that you're not a true Iron Man until you get that second one under your belt. I don't know why they told me that, but so uh, the uh, one upsmanship <laughs> of a sportsman. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but no, I definitely, um, I definitely want to do one more. Then I think I'll resign to doing the halves and then the sprints. But I gotta get one more because. I, I do. I still remember that feeling that I had when I crossed the finish line, and I, I got to taste that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're a man who walks his talk, and so I, I'm just I'm so happy for you, and I appreciate you. So um, make sure to check out their clinic. I'll be I'll be sure to put uh, the websites up for both uh, Rebalance Life and for the hair salon because they are linked together. Um, and again, anything that you've seen in this message that you think is worthy uh, to be sent along. Please pass this on to other people. Feel free to get in contact with Aaron. Um, he'd love to talk to you if you feel like there's a way to, to make this uh, an even better and broader idea. So thanks. Uh, we'll catch up with you guys again soon.